Today is the fifth and final day of our trip to St. George, where we drive from our home up in the Salt Lake City, Utah area, all the way down to a condo in St. George. We have a number of different adventures that we go on every day, and if you'd like to see those, feel free to click on the card above, and that will take you to the playlist of this whole trip. In today's video, we do a couple of morning adventures in St. George, and then we drive back home, and we show what that drive is like in our Tesla Model S. We are back in the car, and we're going to go on a morning hike, and then we're going to head on home. Looking at the car, we are at 99% and it's 65 degrees outside. The drive from our condo to Snow Canyon State Park consumed 3% of our battery and it was a 12 minute drive going 4.4 miles. Uh, that was a 608 watt hour per mile average and that is 50% efficiency. So pretty low efficiency, uh, but we were going up about 350 feet in elevation the whole time. We've arrived. This is West Canyon Road, obviously, and we're going to be going down a trail that is out that direction. And we'll just kind of explore along this road. We have a pretty big group and uh, one kid's in stroller, et cetera. So uh, we're just taking an easy hike today. This made it an excellent opportunity to pull out my one wheel pint and do some trail riding. This is a rock Lucy's gonna climb. It's pretty big. All right, Lucy, start climbing. Hey Lucy. Oh great. Pretty high. Show me your muscles. Good climbing. Perfect. We are uh, exploring this gravel road that we are going right along the side of this cliff face. And uh, kids are having fun exploring and climbing on the cliff face. And there's also these uh, big water containers. I think this is servicing water to the city down where we just came from. The big flat surface, the kids were having fun uh, playing around on it. <laughs> Beautiful view here for sure. And we're heading back to the car and we're gonna be uh, exploring further down the road. After we packed up the kids in the car, we headed back down the road that we had come up on, so we were seeing an elevation decline at that point. And we didn't go back to the condo, we actually went back to the Red Rock or Dixie Sugar Loaf, which was what we explored on day three. Now that drive was a 19 minute drive and it consumed 5% of our battery over those 11.39 miles. And that was a 313 watt hour per mile segment and that is 97.7% efficiency. We stopped back off at Dixie Rock to do some exploring and eat our lunch. So this is the picnic table that we found to eat our lunch and this is the view. There's cool rocks for kids to climb around on and we didn't have to hike really far carrying the food. I climbed up on this nearby rock and there is a fantastic view from up here. I don't know how well you can see that behind me. That's St. George off in the distance. That rock right there is Dixie Rock in the middle of the screen. And this is the surrounding mountainside. And over on this side, they have a road going through it with parking lots periodically, which makes for a convenient place to park if you find a spot available. There's the picnic table where we are eating lunch, and up here on the rock with me is Lucy. <laughs> we climbed all the way up here, huh? Good job. We are back in the car after lunch and playing around in the rocks. Girls, was that so much fun? Yeah. Yeah? What was your favorite part? Climbing. Climbing on the rocks? How about you, Clara? Climbing on the rocks. All right, let's get going. We are now headed up to the Salt Lake area. This is where we are in, in uh, Hurricane or near uh, you know, St. George. And we're gonna be going up here to the Beaver Utah Supercharger. It's estimating that we will arrive there with 32% and then we will continue on our way. The segment of drive from St. George to Beaver Utah was 106 miles, which took us one and a half hours to drive. Now that consumed 63% of the battery of our 2015 Tesla Model S 85D. 
That translates to 58 kilowatt hours or 547 watt hours per mile, which is about 55% efficiency. Now, this was pretty low efficiency, and that was largely due to gaining about 2,600 feet in elevation total, but the total elevation gains was actually 5,224 feet. So that helps to explain that. Now, if we had paid for this electricity at the average retail rate in Utah, it would have cost us $5.40 of electricity. At the supercharger, I think it would have cost us about double that from what I've heard. Well, we are pulling here at the Beaver Utah Superchargers and all eight of them are taken and I see at least four other Teslas in line. So this is terrible. I mean, I've actually heard on Facebook that this was happening, but this is the worst I have ever seen it. We've actually never had to wait in line coming here to the supercharger before. So kind of yeah. sucks, but uh, gotta wait. we got to wait for a little while. We have traveled tens of thousands of miles in our Tesla on many different road trips, which we have playlists for if you go check out on my channel. And this particular supercharger location is known for having a lot of technical issues, uh, down chargers, and it's been getting more and more busy and crowded, and this was a holiday weekend. We've been in line now for a little while. I haven't been keeping track of the time, but it's probably been around 10 minutes or so. We are now front of the line. So with eight chargers, at least people are charging kind of quicker, but they're not crazy fast. And behind us, we have four Teslas waiting. We've been able to plug in. The car is just starting to ramp up here. We're at five kilowatts so far. It is 4.55, and uh, I'll put on the screen here how long it's been since we got here, but it took a while. <laughs> and we're only at 34 kilowatts. So now what I'm gonna do is route us to our intended destination, or at least near it and let's see how long we need to charge here for. Oh man, so that's rough. Looking at the charge rate, we're at 35 kilowatts, which is not surprising. And at that rate, it's going to take us uh, 45 minutes of charge time before we can leave and get home. We'll keep monitoring this and it'll get updated as we're charging and hopefully the charge rate will go up a little bit. We'll see how long it actually takes. Okay. All right, it's only been charging for like one minute. We've gone up 1% and it is up to 71 kilowatts now. So that's good, it has sped up. Uh, but it had done that just before I looked up here because it is still 45 minutes estimated uh, charging time. So we've gotten a charging spot. We're right there in the center of the screen. There are eight chargers along here, like I said before. And there are still cars waiting. In fact, there's seven cars waiting right now. So this location is particularly crowded right now, but it's fall break weekend and a lot of people probably went to California or St. George for the weekend and are now looking to get home. When you are filling the tank of a gasoline or diesel vehicle, the rate of the pump doesn't change. It just is going full speed until the tank is full and then it's complete and you're ready to drive away. With a battery, it charges slower the fuller it gets. So if you look here on the screen, you'll notice that the charge rate in kilowatts had started in the 70s and then slowly declines as the battery gets fuller. And it's for this reason that we typically only charge enough to get to the next supercharger and then we just unplug and go and then stop at the next supercharger with a minimum of one hour apart. In this case, we didn't want to stop and have to wait in line again at the Nephi supercharger, so we just charged a little bit extra so that we could go all the way home. All right, we're heading back to the car and we're gonna get started. And the line has transitioned to an erratic layout on this side of the superchargers. We are charged up enough now. We're at 90%. We started trying to pack the kids up sooner and took us a little bit to get them in their seats. We're down to 19 kilowatts. It's saying 25 minutes to get to full. We won't do that. Uh, right now it's estimating that we'll get back uh, near our home at about 12% and so we're going to get back on the road. And all total this charging session took about an hour. I would say uh, with pretty good confidence that this is the worst supercharger session we have ever had in tens of thousands of miles of driving. Uh, and that is from having to, had to wait for a while uh, and then we had to uh, charge slowly because there were lots of other cars all charging. And I guess that's mainly why. Uh, we've never had actually had to wait like this before. Uh, so it's getting worse. Hopefully they build more superchargers faster. We're on I-15 now and the traffic is pretty bad up here. So we're probably gonna be taking some side routes to try to avoid that bad traffic.
The drive from Beaver to our house took 2 hours and 52 minutes to go 175 miles due to the terrible traffic. We used 73% of our battery, which is 327 watt hours per mile or 93% efficiency. So going that slow really helped increase our efficiency. This segment of drive cost us $6.26 worth of electricity or 103 miles per gallon equivalent. As we were driving, we hadn't gone very long and one of the kids needed to go potty, so we had to stop in Fillmore at a gas station and then we jumped back on the road to battle all of the terrible traffic. It is a beautiful drive watching the sunset occur over the desert and through the mountains and the changing light level, so I liked that. Uh, it was a little bit of a pain dealing with the traffic, but this is where autopilot really does shine. It is now 8.11 p.m. and there is just terrible soul-crushing traffic. Uh, everybody returning home from the fall break and I-15 is really bad. Thank goodness for autopilot. It is able to handle all of this terrible just stop and go traffic. And not that it's relevant, but if you look over here on the map, we are pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. There's just open desert around us. We're not in any city area. It's just so many people returning from there are weekend adventures that uh, the freeway is full out in the middle of nowhere and it's been like this for a long time. Hours of driving. Well, this slow has not been for hours of driving. It's been more like half an hour, but it's been very congested for hours. Also, one other thing worth mentioning, because of the soul crushing slow traffic, we're getting more efficiency on our electric motors because we're going slower and so we're actually going to be arriving with a higher percentage than we had originally anticipated. As a recap of our entire day, we drove a total of 297 miles using up 371 rated miles. A rated mile is 300 watt hours per mile and so we got 80% efficiency for the entire day. We drove 5 hours and we used up 114 kilowatt hours of electricity. We averaged 382 watt hours per mile and used up $12.37 worth of electricity. We are home. We've already gotten the kids to bed. It is now 9.09 .09 p.m. We probably got home, it was about 8.58 when we got home. It was definitely a lot longer drive coming home because obviously we did the whole distance in one day, uh, but also we had to wait for a lot longer, like an extra hour to charge at the Beaver Supercharger. And then just I-15 was super congested with all of the other vacationers coming back today. And there were some parts where we came to a complete standstill while on the freeway in the middle of nowhere, like not anywhere near city. But for what it's worth, that happens. So um, in any case, uh, I was super glad to have autopilot and uh, have driving this car, of course, is always a pleasure as usual. And it worked great for our purposes. Uh, one little uh, tidbit that's kind of interesting on this trip, uh, because we stayed in the hotel on the way down and we charged at that hotel, we didn't have to stop at the Beaver Supercharger on the way down, and then the condo that we stayed in had uh, a, a, an outlet that I was able to utilize to charge the car. So we actually only stopped at one supercharger once on this entire trip, and that was the Beaver Supercharger on the way home today and the rest of it, we just plugged the car in and went to bed. So it was super convenient, other than that Beaver Supercharger stop today. Um, I hope this was, has been helpful for you to see uh, what the car was capable of and, and that it worked great for this type of vacation that we went on today. And if you have any questions, feel free to post those in the comments down below. I'll be making uh, more videos just like this one, so please subscribe if you're interested in seeing this type of content. Also, don't forget to click that like button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.